Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from Strata Hadoop World in New York City. I'm here with Paul Zakopoulos. Paul, how you doing? Good. I'm good. How are you? Good. Exciting so, times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you get a great talk today. Oh, thank you. you. Know, and you're the VP at IBM for big data yep. and other things. Big data, technical sales, and some competitive work. Yeah. 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 So tell us a little bit about what the main points of your talk were about today. Yeah. For, for people who couldn't see it, yeah. what, what, what are the messages you wanted to leave people with? You know, I, a couple things, right? One thing is I talked about this thing called a polyglot environment, right? Yeah, yeah. And you know, we're at a Hadoop conference and it's all about Hadoop and that's exciting, but the world isn't just Hadoop. And so the first thing I want to get across is, look, data is going to reside in multiple places in an advanced architecture for analytics. And it'll uh, sit in uh, RDBMS, it'll sit in NoSQL, it'll sit in Hadoop, it'll sit in object stores. And that was the first piece. The second piece said that uh, without analytics, big data is just a bunch of data. So this is about analytics, right? It's not just about having a huge cluster, it's about the value out of that cluster. And so really that maniacal focus on the shift from spending money to save money, which was the original Hadoop use case, to spending money to make money goes hand in hand. Right. And then I think I rounded that out by saying infuse the analytics, but infuse the data delivery. Because there's all kinds of people that are going to go after the data in the cluster. So those could be you know, R or SPSS modelers that want raw data, but they could be line of business users. And they're going to require different refinements of the data. So you need these refinery services that flow across the ecosystem. And that's it in a nutshell. So, but you come from that from a different perspective because yeah. you are with IBM. And IBM is in many large enterprises. Right, okay. Who have these polyglot environments yeah. and multi-vendor solutions that they're trying to grapple with. Mm -hmm. What do you see as the, the most common thing that your data customers are trying to do? Where they're coming from and where are they going? Yeah, so there's uh, a couple things there. <laughs> yeah, there was. Yeah, there's some, there's some mishaps at customers. <laughs> Let me start with that and see where I think where they're going, right? I think it starts with what is the biggest mishaps? Big data uh, as a science project is a mishap. Find the business case, drive that. So clients are trying to drive business case because they're trying to spend money to make money. I think governance is an overlooked thing. The amount of clients, I think, I feel they're like running with a pair of scissors. Governance begins at the start. And if that data is in RDBMS or if it's in Hadoop's HDFS, it doesn't matter. Personal identifiable data is personal identifiable data. So where are they trying to go to? They're trying to drive agility. So they want to drive analytics in an agile manner. And this isn't a cut out IT or the middleman to analytics, right. if you will, right. but it just takes too damn long to get insights into the data. So we're talking about cloud models and being able to burst from on-premise or the ground into the cloud, these analytic workloads. And you know, if you look at 2017, Gartner came out in 2017 and they predict that line of business will outspend the CEO's office in IT. So it's about self-service BI and then leveraging these analytic components in the cloud. And so that is really about agility. So agility is key there and insights into the data. So that's what they want to do, yeah. right? So how are they going to do that and be yeah. secure in that the governance is working yeah. and that their data is secure and locked, yeah. locked down or whatever? Yeah, so there's two areas to that. One is, can I trust my data in the cloud? And I mean, if you look across our social forums lately, it doesn't feel like you can, does it? Right, right. I actually believe that in the long run, data will be more secure in the cloud than it is on premise. So I, you gave that little look, yeah, right? I did. Said, yeah, really, I did. really? Like your credit card? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So let me suggest this, right? When I look at maniacal focus on security and provisioning of infrastructure services, like we do at IBM in our cloud powered by software, who has more experience on locking those systems down? It's because the number one cause of downtime, number one cause of those kinds of failures is human error. Security breaches, configuration errors. So having folks maniacally focus on that, I think brings economies of scale. Now, this is a, a journey that we're going to get to and we're going to learn along the way. And so also along the way, you need to understand that we have to have services that work ground and cloud. So if I mask some data, your credit card, you're not going to share it with me online, right, 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 if you right. did, <laughs> I'd like to create an enterprise policy that says, here's how we mask this card, okay? I'd like to identify the data steward of that masking policy and whether that data is going to go to the cloud or whether it's going to go to a test here local on premise, it gets masked. And I think those types of constructs are key and it goes back to what I said earlier. Don't run with a pair of scissors, right? Uh, governance first, That's where all the fun is. later. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So you, you talked also today about big match. Yeah. Can you uh, unpack that a little uh, bit? Big match about? was so exciting because if you look at the way how do we match information together? So I'll give you like a common business problem in government. This may come as a surprise to you, I don't know. 
in Canada, governments don't all talk to each other. Really? <laughs> it goes the same way down here. Oh, really? <laughs> so imagine oh, you're if you're in Canada. Yeah, right that's now. right. That's right. Okay. Uh, there are not enough A's yet to figure that out, but they'll no. come. <laughs> so imagine now I'm trying to do child protection services, right? So in a province I work with, child protection services doesn't have access to justice, doesn't have access to parole, doesn't have access to social, to try to understand what's going on and protect a child. No one wants to share all the information because of privacy, but then they end up sharing none of the information. So how do we identify some keys? And that's the premise and then match the information together. This particular individual is on parole and it's the parent of this particular child that's with protection services. So now let's move to my demo and big match. The way we do that is in relational databases. And when we talk about big data, we are talking tens of hundreds of terabytes of system of engagement data. So in the demo, I went and grabbed Twitter data. And how do I match that with my system of record, my customer data? And that's just not going to work in a database. So it's not going to scale the way we want it to scale with agility and economies to scale from a cost perspective. So creating Big Match is IBM's native uh, matching engine, probabilistic engine, and it runs natively and built for Hadoop. And now I can do that at scale, right? So I talked about 10 million rows in a couple seconds. That's what we were matching. And just in local, we have a financial services company that has matched with 90% accuracy. Their clients in their system of record with social profiles and systems of engagement. And you get the opportunity to learn things like your hobbies and your interests. And it's just going to open up the door to getting a 360 degree view of the client. Excellent. Yeah. So where do you see that going in the future? I mean, is, is that going to be deployed in more government and uh, maybe even relief situations where, yeah. let's say another hurricane came and we're putting right. everyone in a big stadium together? Yeah. Do we want the pedophiles mixed with Children yeah. and you know we don't want any pedophile. Right, right. <laughs> we'll put them but, in the jail. But, but, but yeah, yeah. can you yeah, can yeah. you disentangle them yeah. from the world? So listen, I think what you're going to see, and, and you're on at a different point, and I'm going to hit that. I think what you're going to see is this matching engine take off. If I'm successful, you'll see it in government for better cities and better community and citizenship, and you'll see it in in retail for a better customer experience. Sure. Now you talked about the bad guy, which is really interesting. Right. Which comes into big match, right? And now we take that to another level that we call entity resolution, right? Uh, and we have a number of technologies there that attempt to assert connections between people, what these individuals are doing. And under the covers, to your point, this is all matching. So whether I'm matching to sell, matching to protect, or matching to convict, it's all based on that. And Hadoop's going to give us the scale to get a broader picture, more aperture to what we want to match. So IBM has so many divisions, yeah, and indeed. it's so large. <laughs> How does someone find out more about what you guys are doing in the data world? Yeah. Because I know there's Jeff Jonas out in Vegas yeah. has, has his stuff going. Yeah. You're in Canada. Yeah. And there's a group in North Carolina. That's right, they're all over the place. In New York and yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, so how, did, how does someone find out about how to get involved with what IBM has in the data world? Yeah, you know, uh, I think Jeff Jonas is terrific. He's the guy behind that entity resolution yeah, stuff. Great. Incredible yeah. speaker. Um, I would uh, self-plug and say, if you follow me on Twitter, at Big Data underscore Paul Z, I bring this story well before it goes to my books and to the stage at O'Reilly, I bring it to Twitter first. But you know what? There's this thing called Google, right? And type in IBM Big Data, and I think you're going to get a plethora of connections to all kinds of stories that come from different parts of our company. Because I'm from the information management brand, and, and we'll talk about that. But there's all kinds of discovery, like the work we're doing in Watson Analytics and exactly. Cognitive, right? Exactly. We are yeah. going to change the face of medicine with the work we're doing. And the stuff I talk about is what I'll refer to as Watson Foundations. This is how I build and trust the information. And then we get into Cognitive. So, you know, some key searches on, on Watson and those kinds of and things. medical will take as well. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. listen, I'll tell you this on medical. The way we treat cancer today, in my opinion, is barbaric. It's like, it's like the way you would take out if there was a terrorist in the city of Ottawa, you wouldn't blow up the whole city of Ottawa. So we're going to talk about bespoke cancer treatments, and that's going to come from big data and cognitive. It's a, it's a whole new world, and it's exciting. Excellent. So, Paul, of all the, the problems in the world that exist, what would you sick big data on to fix? And, you know, with what you know and what you can yeah, do, yeah. What, what would you fix? So, you know, I'm a data guy, so I think I could, I could even fix my marriage if it was in, <laughs> but it's not in trouble because my wife's watching, but I could fix anything with big data. Look, at, you know, you can drive big data for good and it can be left for bad. If we were to drive it for good, I would really focus on things like traffic flows and congestions and the, and the billions of dollars that are lost worldwide to economies. I would focus on healthcare. In Canada and the United States, you know, this is the number one, number two percentage of GDP spending 
on, uh, by the government and it's out of control, it's not sustainable. So we can make advances in those kinds of medicines and those kinds of better patient outcomes. I think we all live longer. And if we all live longer, then right. we can worry about you buying a new laptop or a shirt. How do we make that happen? How do we get, how do we yeah. get large governmental organizations yeah. and healthcare institutes yeah. to actually use the data and make yeah. sense of the data and put it to use? You know, it's a great question. And it comes from kind of the confluence of a number of groups working together. And you know, I'm proud of IBM and what we've done in the medical area around Watson and, and finding a cure for cancer, working with uh, Emory, Cleveland Clinic, Memorial Sloan, and those kinds of folks, like leading edge. Government has to say, it's time that we go and open our aperture into what we're gonna support. So in, in Canada, you know, we're talking about this matching and they're like, oh no, you can't use social profile data to do anything like that. So we have to change that posture. And as a citizenship, we have to change our posture in some of the information we're willing to share. And by and large, whether it's government or retail, I'm willing to share information with you if it's for my betterment, as long as you curate that data properly and you don't collect it without my knowing. Right? Right. Those are big right. things. Sure. And if we can all get past these blocks, we could come and synergize. We can actually make the place a better world. I know that sounds cheesy, but I, we can yeah. actually do that. So. Well, Paul, I look forward to yeah. seeing what you guys do at IBM. It's, it's a pleasure. Great. Thank Take you. Take care.